There's been quite a buzz about Jason, one of the main leads in the highly anticipated Grand Theft Auto 6. People are spinning theories left, right, and center, suggesting he might be an undercover cop, an agent, an ex-cop, or even someone with a military background. It's been the talk of the town ever since the first official trailer dropped. Now, I've gotta warn you, what we're about to discuss might just spoil a bit of the GTA 6 storyline for you. But hey, if you've been keeping tabs on the GTA 6 grapevine, chances are you've already heard murmurs about these theories. Now, I gotta stress, folks, that as exciting as these speculations are, they're just that. Speculations. Nothing set in stone. But here's the deal. There are some interesting things in Jason's outfit, from certain glimpses in the trailers, and Rockstar's promotional stuff, that sort of fuel these speculations. They're like breadcrumbs teasing us about Jason's potential undercover identity. So today, I'm here to unravel these clues, and take you through the evidence we've got so far. We'll start with the very first trailer of Grand Theft Auto 6. You know, the one that set the internet on fire? We'll dissect it bit by bit, and get into the nitty gritty of this theory that's got the GTA 6 community all hyped up. And it's not just about the trailers, folks. Oh no, there's a whole treasure trove of articles out there, discussing findings made by fans, diving into details, and connecting dots. We're gonna sift through all that too. And hey, while we're at it, let's not forget about the actors. There's been some chatter about who might be stepping into the shoes of Jason in this game. So we'll toss that into the mix as well. There's plenty to unravel, and we're here to explore every nook and cranny of this speculation, piece by piece. So grab your favorite snack, get comfy, cause we're about to embark on a journey through the GTA 6 speculations, theories, and rumors about Jason. Let's start off by jumping into this interesting Reddit post. I've seen some speculation that Jason is an undercover cop makes sense since we see first-person gameplay of a police raid. I'm guessing he falls in love with Lucia, and his storm between his duty and his love could be not true, but it seems like it would be a good twist in something Rockstar would do. Okay, let's take a deeper dive into this scene where we encounter these four police officers. They're pretty unmistakably cops with that distinct police badge on their body armor. It's crucial to note the small details here, especially regarding their attire, as it might hold some key information. Now, among this squad of officers, there's one guy who stands out from the rest. He's chilling on the far right, sporting a casual white tank top, while the others are all suited up in body armor, their caps turned backward. This difference suggests a hierarchy within the group, making us wonder if this dude's perhaps a higher up or holds a different position within the force. The intriguing part, though, is the context of this scene. It feels like a pivotal moment, almost as if these officers are significant characters in the narrative. But let's pump the brakes a bit. It's all speculation at this point. We can't be certain of their importance or their roles in the storyline just yet. Now, let's loop this back to Jason, the main focus of our attention. There's a striking connection here, the cop on the far right and the one in the middle, both sporting these distinct olive green cargo pants. These pants seem to be a part of their uniform, something that catches the eye. But here's the twist. The same style of cargo pants is seen on Jason in the official Grand Theft Auto 6 artwork released by Rockstar. Coincidence? Maybe, but it feels like too much of a match to ignore. What's up with these pants? Is it a fashion trend among the police force in the GTA 6 universe? Or could it be hinting at a deeper connection between these officers and our protagonist, Jason? The plot thickens, and we're left to ponder the significance of these subtle visual cues. Is there a backstory linking these officers to Jason? Or is it merely a design choice by the creators to establish a visual pattern? We're left with questions, my friends. Questions that make us itch to uncover more about this intriguing storyline. So, buckle up as we continue this investigation, piecing together clues and theories, aiming to decipher the enigmatic links between these officers and our mysterious main character, Jason. There's a whole world of possibilities waiting to be explored within the realm of Grand Theft Auto 6. Let's dive into this article by Exputer that further supports this rumor. GTA 6 fans have been busy digging into the lore of both protagonists since the trailer dropped. It appears that users may already have found notable details about Jason. A slew of forums and posts have popped up with speculations with evidence that complies with prior findings. A post by the Redditor, Jack underscore Torrance 80, on the GTA 6 subreddit, solidifies the past rumors that clarified that Jason would start the game as a cop. The pants worn by the protagonist in the GTA 6 poster are a part of the official uniform of Miami-Dade Police. The green cargo pants are the same color used by the Miami-Dade Police SWAT team. Additionally, the inclusion of body cam footage in the trailer may also imply his past background as a cop. 
It is speculated that he was dismissed from the service during the events of the game, having to continue his life as a petty thief. In the side-by-side -side comparison, you'll notice something intriguing. Those pants on the right in the image are an exact match to the ones worn by those police officers in the trailer clip. The detailing with those black bands and the gun holsters, it's all there. But here's where it gets interesting. Jason, in the official artwork, doesn't seem to have any of those gun holsters. It's as if he decided to part ways with that gear when he left the police force, holding onto only those distinctive pants. Now, about that white tank top he's sporting in the artwork, it bears a striking resemblance to the one worn by the cop, positioned on the far right in that clip. It's these little connections that make you wonder if there's more to it than meets the eye. Could it be a deliberate choice by the creators to hint at Jason's past, subtly linking him to the law enforcement world? Or is it just a coincidence? In the comments of the Reddit post, a user says, he is probably a dismissed cop or soldier, got too desperate and started to do petty crimes. Lucia brings him the local connections and scores, and he uses his former police training skills in weaponry and vehicles, a dismissed corrupt cop or soldier, a freshly out of jail ex-prisoner. Victor Vance and Tommy Versetti. And there could be more parallels between these two pairs of characters if you think about it. Vic was being betrayed again and again in his storyline. When he finally decided to quit, his brother pushed him to enter another deal with Tommy, which eventually killed him. Tommy, on the other hand, is a more cunning and ambitious person. He promised Rosenberg to leave him a piece of his Vice City Empire, but later abandoned him and left him exiled in Las Venturas. These observations really bring up some compelling comparisons, especially when looking at Tommy Vercetti and Victor Vance from previous GTA installments. There's a chance we might see echoes of similar themes or storylines reflected in GTA 6, which lines up nicely with what Rockstar teased in the trailer. Let's zero in on Jason's haircut. It's clean cut and short, a style often associated with law enforcement or military personnel. That detail might not be just a coincidence. It could be a deliberate choice by the creators to hint at Jason's past as an ex-cop or someone with a military background. It adds an extra layer of depth to his character, don't you think? I'm genuinely interested in hearing your take on this theory. There is a lot of evidence supporting this theory, and it might be a major deal as we might be working with the police possibly in GTA 6. That would be a completely new gameplay element in the GTA series, so we have a lot to look forward to. Tell me what are your thoughts and opinions about Jason's potential background, whether he's linked to law enforcement or not, as it could shed more light on this intriguing speculation. Hey there, in this video, we're diving into an upcoming terrain system in GTA 6, brought to you by Rockstar Games. Additionally, we'll explore some cool graphics enhancements like ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting slated for the next GTA. The scoop comes straight from an official patent filed by Take-Two Interactive Rockstar's parent company. So let's kick things off by checking out the patent titled Method and Apparatus for Enhanced Graphics Rendering in a Video Game Environment. According to Rockstar Games, the rendering of real-time graphics usually happens in a pipeline setup like this one. At the core of it, the process kicks off by handling 3D vertex information, moving on to render pixel-level details like light color and shadows. In the current systems, one or more shaders are employed for this pixel level rendering. These shaders are essentially programs that operate on the GPU. The challenge in rendering lies in finding the right balance between realism and detail, while ensuring smooth performance, aiming for that higher frame rate. For example, a virtual world should illustrate various terrains that mirror a number of lifelike geographical areas. Each of these terrains can provide unique interactions with a virtual character in the video game. By way of example, a virtual player traveling through sand or snow should leave footprints that are different than the virtual player walking down a concrete sidewalk. However, because of the number of various terrains that need be accounted for, and the unique behavior of each terrain, Conventional graphics systems do not have enough processing power to account for dynamic terrain and the associated interaction with players of the game. So, Rockstar Games developed a shader system for efficiently rendering various types of terrain with high realism. Let's take a peek at the system. The world level map, visible in the bottom right, outlines all the different dynamic terrains, such as muddy, sandy, grassy, hard ground, snowy, and more. Take a gander at this world level map showcasing the diverse terrains. Now, let's explore the various dynamic terrain zones within the game world. Using Red Dead Redemption 2 as an illustration, this world level map plays a pivotal role in determining the terrain that players or NPCs interact with. Essentially, it acts as the foundation to generate a trail map. 
Think of a trail map as a record of all the imprints left behind by characters, vehicles, and other objects, like the aftermath of explosions. Take this image, for instance, showcasing how the snow has been altered by the actions of this NPC. Different shaders of the shader system are used for different terrain types and with different trail map types. For example, basic terrains do not require special shaders, while shallow mud terrains can advantageously benefit from a parallax surface shader to efficiently show ruts and tracks in the terrain with a high-detail trail map. As an additional example, deep mud terrain may use a tessellation surface shader to model the ruts and tracks in the mud. You might be aware that in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can leave realistic footprints in the snow and mud. Rockstar explained that they employ two shaders for this effect parallax maps, and desolation. These shaders create a convincing illusion of high-level deformation, where footprints appear on the terrain surface. In reality, the surface is warped but not physically deformed, ensuring a smooth and polished movement experience. In GTA 6, they're applying the same technique to bring an extra layer of realism. This will be particularly noticeable with explosions, firing RPGs at the ground, walking through mud, or driving vehicles through it, each leaving distinct tracks based on the terrain. RPGs, for instance, will create crates on the ground. This adds a significant level of interactivity, making it feel like you're genuinely impacting the game world in real time. Despite it being an illusion, the result will be remarkably realistic, akin to the snow in Red Dead Redemption 2. To sum it up, this graphics rendering patent encompasses the dynamic terrain, ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting, all exciting new features making their way to GTA 6. Rockstar has invented and patented new graphics rendering systems, which aims to fix some of the problems of traditional graphics rendering systems to make graphics rendering more efficient, thus improving performance and allowing for better, more realistic, and more immersive visuals. Dynamic Terrain System This is a system that records and creates trail maps which make it possible that terrains can be visually deformed when being interacted with in various ways. Players, NPCs, vehicles, objects, and explosions can affect the terrain. For example, leaving footprints or vehicle tracks in sand can be seen in action in Trailer 1. Explosions will leave craters in the terrain as well. It's also possible for certain changes to the terrain to disappear over time. For example, footprints and tracks in mud disappearing after some time since the viscosity of mud makes it return to its normal state after some time. There are different types of terrains, for example, muddy, sandy, hard ground, grassy or snowy terrain. Each type of terrain will react differently. A sandy terrain will be more easily deformed than a grassy terrain, for example. In the initial part of our video, we delved into the rendering pipeline, which also incorporates a lighting stage. While conventional systems often utilize cube maps for pre-rendering lighting, it's worth noting that this is mainly for static elements. When it comes to dynamic characters, pre-computed lighting falls short in accommodating changes from objects within the scene. Although ambient occlusion can be pre-baked, it lacks the capability to update dynamically. Realism takes a hit due to this. Conventional systems often incorporate static lights to mimic reflected light, like sunlight bouncing off the ground and under a table. However, this static approach fails to update with changes in the light source. To address these challenges, Rockstar has patented new systems. Ambient Occlusion This is a graphics technique that can be utilized in multiple forms to determine how light and shading are displayed on an object. It can lead to darkened areas, enhanced contrast, and improved surfaces due to this technology. This patent's Ambient Occlusion system offers some special advantages. Determined by either preset or randomized assets based on developer discretion, the lighting can greatly provide a new vision to world building to make certain areas stand out, akin to a real-life setting. Global Illumination Global illumination is a graphics rendering technique that models how light is bounced off of surfaces onto other surfaces in direct light. Rather than being limited to just the light that hits a surface directly from a light source, direct light. Rockstar's system detailed in this patent uses a bounce map that is projected in a top-down fashion to determine reflected light off of the ground. This bounce map is then converted into a texture that provides an approximation for the expected bounce back of light. This simulates the effect that would be achieved rendering the multiple passes of lighting to account for the natural bounce reflections. The bounce map can then be integrated into the lighting pipeline. During this, a technique is used to determine the area that needs this extra pass for each frame. This way, only the visible and required area is rendered with this technique thus making it very efficient and less performance intensive. Overall, this provides many of the benefits of ray tracing without the computational expense. Ray traced global illumination will probably still be in the game. For example, Lucia prison clip in trailer one. This special system is just a way to render large scale global illumination efficiently. 
Now, let's touch on the final problem that Rockstar has addressed through this patent with conventional systems. Finally, as another example, to develop a rich and engaging game world, it is advantageous to populate the world with variations of similar objects. In other words, you do not want every simulated person, cow, gun, car, cart, ship, or animal generated in the game to look the same. Because the 3D model for many of these objects would be identical, variation was traditionally accomplished by creating different texture files to paint a different look on the object. For example, two variants of a cow model could be created, one with a texture to create a brown cow, and the other with a texture to create a black cow. These prior art systems created the desired variety at the cost of artist time, computer memory, and resources to maintain a multitude of different hand-authored variants for each in-game object. To combat this, Rockstar is introducing material tinting. RDR2 had a system that could tint the color of clothes to create far more variations on NPCs. This new patent is an evolution of that system and allows for creating of several in-game object variants from a single model. It can not only modify an object's colors, but other material properties, such as metalness and lighting parameters, or add additional layers to it, such as mud, snow, or dust as well. Envision the extent of customization that awaits in this game. Summing up the official patent for graphics rendering, it's evident that Rockstar has elevated numerous systems from Red Dead Redemption 2. Share your thoughts on everything covered in today's video in the comments below. In today's video, we're delving into the character creation aspect of Grand Theft Auto 6 and exploring how in-game NPCs will be generated. We'll take a look at a recent patent filed by T2 Interactive, the parent company of Rockstar Games, which sheds light on the character creation process within the world of GTA 6. The patent reveals details about a new system developed by Rockstar Games, designed to streamline character creation and leverage the capabilities of current generation consoles more effectively. As game worlds grow in size and complexity, filling them with diverse and compelling characters and environments becomes increasingly challenging. Artists are tasked with creating every individual in-game object, from characters to buildings and interiors. As these worlds expand, the computational and design efforts required also increase. However, Rockstar Games has once again demonstrated innovation by developing a system that optimizes the rendering of 3D objects, ensuring efficiency without compromising on detail. This system addresses the challenges posed by the ever-expanding scope of game worlds. The patent we're examining in this video is titled System and Method for Game Object and Environment Generation. This video takes a deep dive into the generation of building interiors and characters within the expansive world being crafted by Rockstar Games. The patent starts off by providing an overview of how objects function within 3D spaces, as explained by Rockstar. Objects used in 3D graphics, often called assets, are a combination of geometry data, for example, the 3D model, and data for textures associated with the geometry data. An asset may be formed of one object, or it may be a composite object made from a combination of objects. The objects that form a composite object may in different contexts be used as independent assets unrelated to the composite object, or they may always be used as a subset of a larger object. They've provided an intro to how 3D objects function in games, aiming to help us grasp the workings of their latest invention. Persons of skill in the art will recognize that many different sorts of assets, such as vehicles, can be made from collections of subcomponents. For example, one aspect of the game might require a room, say a dining room. That entire dining room could be considered one game asset, but it will likely be created from several other assets, such as a table, chairs, dishes, glasses, wallpaper, flooring, etc. The glasses and chairs are independent of the larger dining room asset. As another example, a virtual person in the game, such a background character in a scene, would also be an asset. A person asset might be made up of a number of interchangeable objects, such as legs, a torso, arms, a head, etc. Because the person is made up of interchangeable objects, a variety of different persona sets can be made by mixing and matching different constituent parts. But a body part like a torso might always be used as a subpart of a larger body object. Prior art systems generally include libraries of game assets. The systems and methods of the present disclosure add a metadata layer to these game asset systems and provide modified development and game architectures to take advantage of the new metadata layer. This metadata layer includes tags that are added to the object in order to provide useful descriptors. In a preferred embodiment, these descriptors are completely freeform and without context. This allows developers to specify information about objects as needed without having to be locked into a ridge pre-configured schema. Rockstar's new system introduces an additional metadata layer and utilizes tags for enhanced functionality. In the next section, they provide examples illustrating how this tagging system will operate. 
For instance, characters and virtual beings within the game world will be assigned tags like skinny, chubby, average, attractive, ugly, young, old, and so on. They explain that this tagging system won't just apply to the 3D models or textures alone, but to the entire object package, which includes the model and its associated textures. Essentially, every aspect of a particular character will be tagged. For example, skin textures for elderly characters will be tagged as old, while arms and torsos for heavier characters will be tagged as chubby. They also list other tag examples provided by Rockstar, such as sporty, hipster, emo, preppy, nerdy, luxury, basic, new, worn out, business, and formal. Moreover, each component can have its own tag, and there can even be collections of assets with tags. Furthermore, they explain that all these assets can be stored on servers for easy developer access via an application programming interface, API. Additionally, these assets can be stored in various formats like XML, limited text, binary encoding, relational databases, and others, depending on the developer's proficiency. The systems and methods of the present disclosure further advantageously use the metadata via a rule set layer that uses the metadata to increase the speed and efficiency of game rendering, world or scene creation, game script execution, and rendering fidelity. In particular, the rule set allows designers to add context to the tags and to control their use by setting rules for the asset usage and the asset's interaction with the game and other objects. These rules are unrestricted and can be used to provide a wide variety of different capabilities and restrictions for objects. Let's take a look at how these tags will be put into action. For instance, if a jacket object is created, a tag like additional top garment can be assigned to it. Then, during gameplay, certain rules might search for this specific tag to identify objects like jackets. Furthermore, in a cold setting, the character's health stat may decrease at a slower rate because the character stays warm with the additional top garment. Moreover, the additional top garment tag could enhance rendering efficiency. For instance, if a character wears a shirt underneath a jacket, the shirt occupies memory space. Since the shirt is mostly covered by the jacket, Rockstar plans to replace the full shirt with a smaller texture, only containing the visible parts under the jacket, thus conserving memory. The combination of tags and the rule set can also be used advantageously for procedural generation of game objects and environments. For example, a game scene could be created in a game script by calling assets based on tags, rather than calling the assets explicitly. For example, if the game scene called for virtual characters in a movie theater, the game designer could simply specify a need for predetermined X number of characters with casual dress. If the designer wanted a sci-fi movie playing at the theater, it might also call for a higher percentage than normal of characters tagged nerdy. The metadata rule set interface would interpret these general instructions at game runtime to randomly generate virtual characters fulfilling those needs. Additionally, this system offers increased efficiency. For instance, the entire character object doesn't need to be packaged before streaming to the GPU for processing. Instead, they can be generated directly on the GPU using existing model and texture assets. Of course, Rockstar aims to utilize as many preloaded GPU textures as possible while maintaining a realistic variety in the scene. Moreover, this system allows them to control the number of preloaded textures used in a scene. For instance, more textures can be preloaded for complex scenes and fewer for simpler ones. The goal of this video is to provide an overview of the key aspects of this new system, so I won't delve into every example described in the patent. Turning to the details of the specified metadata, in a particularly advantageous embodiment, the following metadata is included for each model and texture, IDs, property tags, match tags, randomization restrictions, expression data, and optimization data. While this selection of metadata has been found advantageous, different groupings and subsets of these tags can be mixed and matched as needed to accomplish particular design goals without departing from the spirit and advantages of the present disclosed inventions. The uses, embodiments, and benefits of each of these fields are described as follows. These elements constitute the metadata, and while I won't delve into each one individually, they essentially represent the various tagging methods Rockstar employs to organize models and textures. These tags facilitate accurate and efficient filtering and sorting of assets within the virtual world. I trust this video provided you with an understanding of the tagging system Rockstar has devised. I'm personally excited about the potential for greater NPC variety in this vast world. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. 
Today's video will delve into the upcoming changes to the AI systems in Grand Theft Auto 6 by Rockstar. We'll explore a patent that introduces a groundbreaking system unprecedented in gaming, promising a revolutionary shift in how AI operates within games. Additionally, we'll delve into other intricacies concerning AI and non-playable characters in GTA 6, including insights from a job listing at Rockstar's new LA studio, shedding light on NPC dialogue. We'll also examine NPC behaviors in response to their environment and their integration with social media, enhancing immersion and complexity in player interactions. Let's kick off with Rockstar's innovative AI system set to debut in Grand Theft Auto 6. Described by Rockstar as the most significant and immersive evolution of the series, the emphasis on immersion is evident in their patent filings. We'll focus on one particularly intriguing patent, unveiling a new system poised to revolutionize AI in gaming. Considering Rockstar's commitment to delivering the most immersive experience yet, it's evident that NPCs and AI will play pivotal roles. This patent specifically pertains to animations in GTA 6, aptly named System and Method for Virtual Character Locomotion. Back in 2020, Rockstar Games unveiled an innovative system that will debut in GTA 6. Now the details might sound a bit complex, but essentially, this patent outlines a fresh approach to animating characters and imbuing them with dynamic intelligence. These characters will now possess a kind of virtual brain, allowing them to react to their environment, other NPCs, weather, and even their mood, influencing their animations on the fly. Before this advancement, each character's animation had to be painstakingly recorded in a studio equipped with motion capture technology. This process involved attaching markers to actors' suits and compiling animations into what's called an animation tree. This method was resource-intensive, limiting the variety of animations Rockstar could include in their games. For instance, in GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2, each NPC had its own animation tree, containing all their actions. Animation trees essentially stack animations, blending them together seamlessly and transitioning between them based based on player input and in-game conditions. Additionally, motion matching, a feature seen in GTA 5 and RDR 2, automatically selects animations based on player actions and the surrounding environment. This results in fluid and lifelike character movements, such as running while shooting, creating a more immersive experience for players. With GTA 6, Rockstar introduces an innovative system designed to optimize resources and streamline animation data. This approach allows for more content within the game while offering a broader array of animations. It shares similarities with motion matching but diverges in its utilization of a new framework. Rather than relying on conventional animation trees, character animations will be predominantly data-driven, adapting dynamically to environmental cues. These animations will be categorized into distinct motion types, representing unique character styles. Each character will possess a designated motion type, enhancing the depth and realism of their movements. As an illustration, let's consider various states such as tired, injured, and normal, each corresponding to a set of animations. Additionally, every character will possess their own blackboard, a virtual representation of their current state and surroundings. This blackboard stores crucial data including the character's condition, location, weather, temperature, and more. Utilizing this information, the game's code dynamically selects appropriate animations or styles for the character, enhancing their responsiveness to the virtual world. For instance, in the Ocean Drive scene from the trailer, we observe a character seated on the sidewalk. As a group of NPCs pass by, he attentively observes them, reacting accordingly to their presence. With this system, the gameplay experience is poised to become even more immersive. It will prioritize environmental data, including the presence of other NPCs and vehicles, alongside factors influencing the character's mood. Consequently, NPCs will exhibit previously unseen levels of reactivity, shifting focus to a noteworthy job listing from Rockstar's recruitment opportunities. Last year, Rockstar opened a new studio in Los Angeles, from what we know, it's purely a new motion capture studio, so they have another one besides the one in New York, mainly to record NPC dialogue probably. This discovery confirms that. I checked Rockstar's careers page just now, and there's a job offer at Rockstar LA for associate writer pedestrian and ambient dialogue. This could indicate that they are still writing and recording GTA 6 NPC dialogue right now. This suggests that the development team is currently engaged in scripting and recording NPC dialogue for GTA 6. You can find the specific responsibilities outlined in the job description provided. It says, write funny, character-driven, and unique dialogue for our ambient population. Work with key stakeholders to understand and support the technical requirements for player-led, dialogue-based interactions with our ambient population. Provide exciting dialogue that works within the strict constraints of a complex game system. Undertake self-motivated research and leverage that research to enrich your writing. 
understand and match the tone of our games. This underscores the commitment of Rockstar to ensuring that GTA 6 remains true to its franchise roots. Aligning NPC dialogue with the established GTA universe bodes well for the game's authenticity. Shifting gears to another aspect related to NPCs, let's delve into how they'll integrate with social media. Not only will NPCs exhibit more lifelike behaviors and interactions with their surroundings, but they'll also engage with social media platforms, a novel addition to Grand Theft Auto 6. Here's a rundown of the phones observed. NPCs will be equipped with various phone models, as evident from both images and the trailer. Notably, NPCs will actively engage with their phones, which boast fully functional cameras and displays, an improvement over GTA V. For instance, in a scene from the trailer set on Ocean Drive, an NPC can be observed capturing photos or videos with their phone. The displayed imagery accurately reflects the NPC's point of view, suggesting the possibility for NPCs to record and share in-game content on the virtual social media platforms. Let's delve into an intriguing Reddit post that delves into this aspect further. Here's why NPC recorded TikToks aren't as far-fetched as you think. A common speculation point I see on this subreddit is the potential for NPC recorded TikToks for the game's social media that was teased in the trailer. Like someone filming you commit a crime and you later seeing that post online. Many have dismissed this as far-fetched in terms of development complexity, but I wanted to discuss why it's plausible. Firstly, I think we've already seen a system that could serve as a base for building a TikTok-like system, the Instant Replay, Rockstar Editor from GTA 5. Given this game is more of a sandbox with physics rather than a competitive shooter, where replay systems are typically seen, it's even more impressive to consider this system in GTA 5. It accurately records and replays events just as they happened, with every car, ragdoll, etc. Moving just as it did originally in the moment. The tech behind this isn't actually recording like a camera and replaying, it's really just recreating it, which again makes it impressive how much time Rockstar put into it, making it accurate. To me, this feels like what could be used as a base for a system where NPCs record their own videos from their perspective. This next thing is something I could have sworn I remember hearing long ago, but can't seem to find, and was hoping someone on here remembers too. Back before GTA 5's launch, there were details revealed through various interviews, magazines, etc., and I remember hearing or reading something about being able to watch your own crimes on Weasel News on the TV. This obviously didn't end up in the game, but there is a slight remnant of it in GTA Online. Am I the only one who remembers this being mentioned for single player though? Maybe my mind is playing tricks on me. Anyways, this last point is actually from the trailer. At the 033 mark, in this scene we see a lot of NPCs hanging out on a busy street, and one NPC in particular recording on his phone. As we know Rockstar's trailers are always all in engine, no CGI cinematics, so I think it's worth noting that it looks as if his screen is accurately showing what he's looking at. My screenshot is zoomed in, but if you got hat mark on the trailer, you can see it matches up to what he's looking up at. Could this be a hint towards said system, or just a nice detail? Rockstar has a reputation for delivering what they showcase in their trailers, often exceeding expectations. Their dedication to enhancing NPC interactions in GTA 6 underscores their commitment to creating a vibrant and authentic game world. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on these developments. Feel free to share your opinions in the comments below. Today's video dives into the NPC AI patent, focusing on virtual navigation in Grand Theft Auto 6. This patent sheds light on the intricacies of in-game traffic, promising a heightened level of realism compared to previous iterations. We'll explore the notable enhancements Rockstar has implemented, creating a more sophisticated system that elevates the gaming experience. By examining various sources, we aim to provide a comprehensive overview of this navigation system, offering insights into what Rockstar has in store for NPC navigation in GTA 6. Let's delve into the details of this intriguing patent. System and method for virtual navigation in a gaming environment. Let's break down this patent for a moment. Essentially, it gives us insight into how non-playable characters operate within the game environment. They explain that NPCs' actions are controlled through artificial intelligence, allowing for real-time decision-making based on preset algorithms. In many systems, this is achieved through nodes and links, where each node contains important data that influences NPC movement. For example, in a game involving vehicles, this data could include factors like vehicle speed, lane width, road type, and number of lanes. Now, these nodes are essentially waypoints that NPCs follow to navigate from one point to another. In simpler sections of the road, these nodes might be connected linearly, guiding NPCs straightforwardly. But in more complex areas, like junctions, the nodes become more intricate. Take a basic intersection, for instance. 
A vehicle approaching it would have several exit options, leading to a branching network of nodes. In older systems, like the one used in GTA 5, NPCs might make decisions at these junctions based on simple rules, sometimes leading to behaviors that seem a bit random. However, this conventional method has its limitations, especially when it comes to handling various factors like weather conditions, changing lanes, parking cars, or anticipating road exits. In these situations, the old system could falter, as NPCs might not adapt well to the dynamic environment. One downside of the node-based system is its limited capacity to replicate real-life factors that humans naturally consider. Another drawback is its constraint in automating NPCs effectively. Due to memory and processing limitations, only a set number of NPC-controlled cars can be spawned in the game. Naturally, players crave a more immersive experience with a greater number of NPC-controlled cars on the road. Moreover, in conventional systems, NPCs often repeat the same actions, and some may even disappear as players get closer to them. Additionally, in GTA 5, the system relies on local traffic avoidance for NPCs to steer clear of collisions. This means that NPCs continuously scan their immediate surroundings each frame for any obstacles like vehicles, pedestrians, or objects. Using a front-facing polygon, they gather data about the road layout and calculate the optimal steering angle to dodge obstacles or stay on the road. It's worth noting that this process occurs independently for each frame, without any reference to previous frames. This results in slower detection, as the system may not recognize a road blockage promptly. Instead, it interprets the obstruction as something to be avoided, without distinguishing it as a complete road blockage. Recognizing these limitations, Rockstar has engineered an NPC system that addresses these shortcomings of conventional systems. This advanced system efficiently manages NPC nodes and node graphs, yielding optimal outcomes while circumventing hardware and software constraints. NPCs in this system demonstrate heightened spatial awareness and adaptability, capable of altering routes based on real-time data from the environment. Moreover, this innovative system synergizes with the tagging mechanism discussed in earlier discussions. Through node analysis, the system identifies tags, such as indicating a road leads to a junction unsuitable for large vehicles. Consequently, large vehicles are deterred from entering. Furthermore, NPCs within this system consider various attributes of vehicle types, models, including speed restrictions, acceleration and braking capabilities, top speeds, cornering abilities, and vehicle size. NPCs will consider a plethora of data from their surroundings, leading to heightened situational awareness. Video games are populated by NPCs who are able to make real-time decisions based on their environment. Games use a specific system for NPCs to traverse the game world. However, this system is very limited, and thus the decisions NPCs can make are very limited as well. NPCs in vehicles only consider their close vicinity, but nothing else. Also, to avoid collisions, NPCs only consider the last generated frame and base their reaction on that. No prior frames are considered. Rockstar has invented a new system which aims to fix these issues and make NPCs more intelligent, and thus make the game world feel more realistic. NPCs can now consider factors like traffic, as well as account for changing lanes when parking cars, anticipating a road exit, weather conditions, and the like. There are more than a predetermined number of NPC-controlled cars in the game now for a realistic experience for the player. Vehicles can now plan accordingly in case there is any type of road blockage. This also applies to police cars being able to navigate their way through traffic during a chase. I'd like to highlight another breakdown of the patent, which dates back three years ago. Let's delve into it. Take away from yesterday's patent post. I've read over the patent post from yesterday, and I noticed a lot of people missed the most exciting information in it. I'll sum it up in non-technical language. It's essentially a method to improve vehicle AL when driving currently. When NPCs drive on the road, they can sense a few cars around them to determine crashes or other things to drive around. This is dumb AL, as it has very few factors to take into account, and requires a lot of computational resources. This is why vehicles despawn when far away to free up the CPU. Rockstar's patent describes a system that primarily will change this and give NPCs more situational awareness. They will essentially have an objective of navigating from one location to another. Simplified, but is essential in making routines similar to RDR2, and be able to take into account other external factors. Coolest of all, NPCs will still exist when your game isn't rendering them in this implementation. Specific examples mentioned by Rockstar state they will be able to use weather conditions, traffic, and crashes to determine where to go. 
Some areas might be dangerous in the rain, they might avoid it. If an area has too much traffic, they will avoid it. Possibly destructible environmental areas could be reacted to. Similar to bridges in Just Cause, this point is speculation, however. Cars will also be able to take into account number of lanes and speed in their decisions. NPCs will be also able to take into account high-speed chases and be able to navigate if they themselves are speeding. There will also be other reactions that are mentioned specifically, such as changing lanes before a highway exit appears, and as Rockstar puts it, driving slower on residential type roads or having to perform certain maneuvers to avoid oncoming traffic on single lane streets. The large part they also mention is this implementation uses a lot less processing power. The NPC schedules can be relayed by a central server, they could possibly use the console itself as well, and it doesn't require the same constant surrounding analysis. As previous Al Rockstar mentions, this will allow them to have denser traffic with the same resources. A large aim also seems to be realism. Rockstar's patent mentions realistic reactions to various factors as being the main intent. For example, NPCs will each have different driving ability levels, based on the driver and the car. Essentially, each driver will have its own profile, and have unique driving characteristics as well as skill level. Some might speed, others might not. Each vehicle will also affect the driving of these drivers. We're eagerly anticipating the debut of this new system in action in GTA 6. Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Taking a deeper dive into GTA 6, we find out new info around the highly anticipated Trailer 2, highly probable predictions, and the projected timelines associated with this game. Post the unveiling of Trailer 1 on December 5th, 2023, providing enthusiasts with a tantalizing glimpse into the world of the forthcoming GTA installment. Rockstar has maintained a notable silence. Despite the absence of official announcements, the internet has been abuzz with articles and claims, including a recent piece highlighting details allegedly leaked by a Twitter user. It's prudent to approach such assertions with a discerning eye, given the prevalence of misinformation in the digital space, especially with the emergence of numerous GTA 6-themed accounts. Interestingly, amidst the sea of speculations, it's essential to acknowledge the presence of individuals who accurately leaked details about the first trailer on Reddit before its official release. One mysterious figure stands out, predicting not only the featured song, but also pinpointing the release date, directing curious minds to their username as a form of verification. This individual, while refraining from sharing disruptive insights into the game's development, did provide a tantalizing glimpse into new features. Among the disclosed features are the intriguing prospect of dual-wielding weapons, confirmed instances of gore and dismemberment, and the promise of varied sunset colors. A unique addition to the GTA universe includes a Miami-themed 3v3 basketball element, with a connection drawn to a hypothetical collaboration between Rockstar and LeBron James. The figure behind these leaks, having created their account on November 19th, 2023, mysteriously vanished shortly after sharing these details, leaving behind a trail of speculative wonder. As we navigate through these uncharted waters of gaming anticipation, the veil of mystery surrounding GTA 6 continues to captivate and enthrall gaming enthusiasts worldwide. Diving deeper into the intricacies surrounding the leaked gameplay footage, it's important to clarify that what we witnessed is not a true representation of the final product. The showcased gameplay is derived from an older build, and the developers have assured the gaming community that the game will undergo significant visual enhancements. This preliminary look is merely a glimpse, offering little resemblance to the expansive and refined map that will unfold when the game is officially released. In evaluating the validity of information, it's pertinent to underscore that Jamie King's perspectives on GTA 6 hold little value, and the credibility of the Reddit leak stands stronger. As is customary in the gaming landscape, a level of skepticism is warranted particularly given the prevalence of misinformation circulating through various GTA 6-related accounts. Now, turning our focus to the anticipation surrounding the release of the second trailer for GTA 6, historical trends provide valuable insights. Examining the timelines of previous releases, such as GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2, reveals a consistent pattern. The second trailer typically arrives approximately a year after the debut of the first one. This established rhythm aligns with expectations for GTA 6. Considering the guidance from Rockstar and its parent company, Take-Two Interactive, which envisions the game's release in fiscal year 2025, ending on March 31st, the stage is set for an eagerly awaited gaming experience. The projected revenue of $8 billion underscores the ambitious plans to deliver groundbreaking titles, with GTA 6 at the forefront. 
The confirmation of the 2025 release through the first official trailer adds another layer of certainty to the equation. With the prospective release of GTA 6 in the first quarter of 2025, the logical assumption is that the second trailer will make its debut sometime in 2024. Speculations within the gaming community have surfaced, with one user dissecting the first trailer and estimating an August or October release for Trailer 2, followed by a potential final trailer in January. The sentiment resonates with the idea of maintaining momentum and sustaining excitement among fans. An intriguing twist enters the narrative with the potential release of the PS5 Pro in November, suggesting a strategic move to reduce the waiting time for additional information. As the community engages in this dynamic dance of anticipation, excitement mounts for the next trailer, where glimpses of actual gameplay are eagerly awaited. Venturing deeper into the realm of anticipation surrounding GTA 6, comparisons with Red Dead Redemption 2, which boasted six trailers, underscore the immense budget and expansive scope that the upcoming installment is set to showcase. Expectations are set for a dynamic marketing approach with two trailers, each dedicated to unraveling the story of a protagonist. This anticipation is further fueled by the likelihood of a dedicated gameplay trailer, shedding light on the mechanics and features, as well as a comprehensive trailer providing insights into the vastness of the game's map. Additionally, there's a tantalizing prospect of a trailer focusing on the diverse groups and gangs that inhabit distinct zones within the game. This comprehensive promotional strategy is indicative of a monumental project that promises to redefine the gaming landscape. Now, let's unravel the rationale behind the assertion that GTA 6 is poised for a late 2025 release. Examining the historical trajectory of game releases, particularly the two-year gap between the initial trailer and the game hitting the shelves, aligns seamlessly with fiscal reports. This alignment serves as a solid foundation for confidence in predicting the game's availability by the end of 2025. Pondering the intriguing possibility that GTA 6's launch timeline might mirror that of its predecessor, GTA 5, sparks curiosity. Noting the first teaser trailer's debut on November 2nd, 2011, and comparing it with GTA 5's unveiling on December 5th, 2023, there's a parallelism that invites speculation. Expanding this analogy to include the release of the first two screenshots for GTA 5 on July 12th, 2012, suggests a timeline for potential content drops for GTA 6. If we entertain the notion of a one-year gap between the first and second trailers, mirroring historical patterns, and factor in Rockstar's potential aim for a fall release, an intricate timeline unfolds. Of course, acknowledging the industry's unpredictability, potential delays could sway this projection. Encouraging the community to share their insights, the script opens a channel for predictions regarding the release of GTA 6 Trailer 2. For those intrigued by a personal timeline, a meticulous projection is presented. The anticipation of Trailer 2 making its debut around April or May 2024, strategically ahead of the summer, is poised to keep the gaming community buzzing. Subsequent to this, the prediction of a third trailer, potentially a gameplay trailer, surfacing around October or November of the same year, with the possibility of extending into December, adds to the excitement. Early 2025 is earmarked for another critical trailer, presumably a launch trailer, complemented by TV spots to amplify the buzz. During the interim periods, additional content drops are anticipated, featuring new screenshots, short-form videos, and artworks, ensuring a sustained engagement with the gaming audience. Acknowledging the evolving landscape of marketing, the script posits that character trailers, a hallmark of GTA 5's promotional strategy, may not be a focal point this time. The shift from three protagonists in GTA 5 to two in the current installment lends credence to this assertion. The first trailer introduced Lucia, and the prediction is that the second trailer will shift the spotlight to Jason, offering glimpses into his character and potentially unveiling more facets of the game's map, including Sport Gilhorn. Furthermore, a dedicated story trailer is envisioned, delving deeper into the narrative, characters, and plot. If Rockstar aims to sustain the momentum generated by the first trailer and is eyeing an early 2025 release, the likelihood of witnessing the second trailer before the summer of the current year becomes plausible. This expansive and speculative exploration of GTA 6's potential trajectory invites the gaming community to share their perspectives, fostering an engaging discourse in the comments section. The GTA 6 community has just found some major clues left by Rockstar Games, and it was under our nose the whole time. GTA 6's Trailer 1 revealed a ton of new things about the game off the bat, 
But recently, there's been even more developments that show off the GTA 6 main character story, Lucia. We learn a bunch of new things about her background, so if you're not interested in potential spoilers, this may not be the video for you. This information is directly from Rockstar Games, so this is the real deal. So getting into the details of Lucia's jail cell, let's focus on those newspaper clippings. I'll do my best to zoom in and enhance the image, but there are two distinct white clippings with black text. One of them appears to have a portrait, and I can only speculate that it might resemble a modern-day wanted poster. This could be showcasing the story of Lucia's alleged crime, accompanied by an image like a visual representation of what she's accused of. It's almost akin to a wanted picture that you'd find in a newspaper. This phenomenon isn't unheard of in real life. When people do something noteworthy or newsworthy, it's not uncommon for them to keep a record of it, like an article, and put it up on their wall as a sort of memento. It's like a snapshot of a moment in their life, even if it involves legal trouble. So Lucia might be preserving this particular newspaper clipping as a piece of her history, whether it's for sentimental reasons or perhaps as a reminder of the circumstances that led to her incarceration. Now let's broaden the scope a bit and draw comparisons to previous GTA protagonists. Take Michael DeSanta, for instance. His mansion has family photos on the walls. Franklin Clinton's house features similar personal touches. Even Trevor Phillips, in his trailer, has pictures that tell a story about his life. It's not just confined to the HD era. Even in the 3D era games, characters had their own way of leaving traces of their lives in their living spaces. This inclination to personalize living spaces is fascinating. In Lucia's case, the jail cell is an unexpected canvas for her personal story. It makes you wonder about her background, the choices she made, and the events that led her to that cell. Exploring these details could give us a deeper understanding of who she is and why she's in the predicament we find her in. Considering Lucia's attachment to those newspaper clippings, it raises interesting questions about her attitude towards her crimes. Perhaps she finds a sense of pride or even enjoys the bit of notoriety or fame she's garnered from her actions. Keeping those clippings might be her way of cherishing the attention or recognition she's received. The prospect of spending a substantial amount of time in prison also suggests that it could involve more than just a brief cutscene, but potentially a series of missions within the jail environment. Now, shifting our attention to the picture above the bunk bed, it's a bit of a visual puzzle. While it's challenging to discern details, on the left side, there's a guy with a drink in hand, donning a white t-shirt. Next to him is a woman with voluminous hair, and in the foreground, there's another figure. This composition raises the question of whether these individuals could be Lucia's family. The dynamics and connections between characters are often crucial in unraveling the narrative of any GTA game. Acknowledging my limited knowledge about jail life, it's uncertain whether inmates generally have the privilege of keeping photographs with them as mementos. However, in this specific scenario, it appears that Lucia can. This might imply that the prison depicted isn't a maximum security facility, given the freedom for inmates to keep personal items. While the setting is far from casual, it offers a level of interaction and mobility, allowing inmates to go outside, engage in conversations, sit at tables, and soak in sunlight. The orange jumpsuits signify their status, but the absence of being handcuffed to the ground suggests a certain level of relative freedom. In this context, the allowance of pictures and photographs could offer an additional layer of insight into the characters and their personal connections, providing players with a unique perspective on Lucia's life both inside and outside the jail cell. Taking a closer look at the latest image, which I've adjusted to bring out more details, there's another intriguing photograph. A guy in an orange shirt catches the eye, positioned alongside two women on the right. The one on the left appears to be sporting a hat and sunglasses, although discerning whether any of them is Lucia remains challenging. They could very well be family members, close friends, or simply individuals from her social circle. Amidst all the uncertainty, Lucia seems notably fixated on reflecting upon her actions and the community's response. Beyond this, it's evident that Lucia maintains a distinct connection with a specific group of people, as indicated by the presence of their pictures in her jail cell. It's not just about her individual experience. There's a shared history captured in those photographs, hinting at relationships that go beyond the confines of the jail cell. Directly below the image featuring the guy in the orange shirt and the other girls, there's yet another photograph. Although the details are obscured, the presence of someone standing in the picture is noticeable. Lucia is seemingly constructing a collage of photos, creating a visual narrative that serves as a repository of memories. These images might play a crucial role in not only grounding her within the context of her relationships, 
but also providing a semblance of continuity and connection to the outside world. It's worth mentioning that the footage I'm working with is the highest quality version sourced from YouTube, as Rockstar hasn't officially released it on their Newswire page. Despite being in 4K, the YouTube upload might introduce some compromises in image quality, so there could be nuances in the pictures that we might miss. Once Rockstar throws the official trailer our way, we're likely to get a treasure trove of additional details. But for now, let's roll up our sleeves and dissect the snapshots from Lucia's jail cell. Apart from Jason, there's another player in Lucia's story. Stephanie, the Leonid Department of Corrections representative. Picture a different scene, though. Lucia's cell is a far cry from Stephanie's office. In this particular shot, Stephanie's unmistakably holding down the fort in a black dress, center stage on the right. Flip to the left frame, and there she is again, donning a red dress on the right side. Behind her, there's a framed message teasing with, if you miss, but the rest remains a mystery due to some pesky screen glare. Now, let's make a full turn and voila, another Stephanie pick in the bottom right corner. This time, the backdrop suggests a domestic scene, perhaps with a partner. She's got on some bluish shades, slightly different from what we catch a glimpse of later. The background paints a more vivid picture, a collection of books, pamphlets, a conspicuous high visibility vest, and yet another potential newspaper clipping. Whether it's a routine thing or an anomaly, the jury's still out. So, what's the inside scoop on Lucia's backstory gleaned from her jail cell environment? Well, the state of the jail suggests it's seen better days. Peeling bits off the windows, hint at a place with some history. That initial shot with the barbed wire strongly implies it's not a newly minted spot. It's got the wear and tear of time etched into its surroundings. As we immerse ourselves in the intricacies of Lucia's life within the jail cell, the narrative unfolds as a captivating tapestry, each element contributing to the rich story. The subtleties, from the cryptic newspaper clippings, shedding light on her alleged crimes to the carefully chosen photographs, depicting relationships with family and friends, create a vivid and compelling portrait of Lucia's existence, both within and beyond the jail confines. The personal touches within her confined space evoke a rawness that harks back to the legacy of previous GTA protagonists. Lucia's jail cell, unexpectedly, becomes a canvas revealing a story that transcends the conventional GTA narrative. It prompts curiosity about her past, the decisions that led her to incarceration, and the intricate web of relationships that define her. The permission granted for personal items like photographs in the jail cell adds an intriguing layer to the storytelling, suggesting a nuanced sense of freedom within the constraints of imprisonment. Lucia's attachment to these items, whether they be newspaper clippings or family snapshots, beckons players to ponder her perspective on her own actions and the recognition she may have garnered. While we eagerly await the official trailer release from Rockstar, it is clear that Lucia's story is woven with complexities and mysteries that leave us yearning for more. The weathered appearance of the jail environment, with peeling bits off the windows and subtle signs of aging, hints at a setting steeped in history, amplifying the anticipation for the unfolding narrative. Thus, with these glimpses into Lucia's world, we find ourselves surrounded by a plethora of unanswered questions. When did she find herself behind bars, and what duration does her stay entail? Your insights are eagerly awaited in the comment section. If this exploration into Lucia's jail cell has piqued your interest, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. Comment down below what you believe caused Lucia to go to jail. And did you spot these hidden Easter eggs in the trailer on your first watch? I'm interested to hear back from you guys. Thank you for watching. If you would like to support our analysis content on GTA 6, make sure to subscribe and leave a like.